So, welcome. Welcome po. Dalawa po tayo ngayon. Hey. Um, welcome for Module 2. Ang pag-uusapan po natin ngayon is actually now how to uh, to start trading uh, in your trading platform. We are also going to talk about different uh, concepts pa. Since you know the language, ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon is yung, yung mga concepts pa of leverage. Pag nakakarinig ko ba kayo ng leverage sa sinabi ni Ralph kanina? And then, ano ba yung lots? Baka narinig nyo na yung lots na inexplained din ni Ralph before. And then, yung concept ng, buy, uh, ng bid and ask. Kasi magkaiba ang buying rate sa selling rate. So, later po, lahat po yan na-explain. Even to the point na yung pip, maiintindihan nyo po yung how much are you earning per pip. Okay? So, here, ang um, pag-uusapan po natin yung mga basic formulas, yung concept po ng leverage, and paano ba siya na-apply sa trading. Uh, pwede kaya po nat, ipag-aaralan natin na i-calculate din po yung mga pip na profit natin or even loss. Uh, yung concept ng bid and ask, kasi if you notice, sa ating trading platform, bakit dalawa yung exchange rate, tas merong bid and ask. So, let's talk about it. And then, we're going to talk about lots. And then, don't worry naman. Once you understand the concept, hindi nyo siya kailangang i-compute na i-compute lagi pag nag-trade kayo. I'll give you tools. Uh, tools for uh, sa baby pips from the websites na ginagamit din namin. Okay? So now, uh, let's talk about basic formulas. I think it's better na as we move along to per slides, dun ko po i-explain yung concept ng formulas. So, there are probably three or four formulas, uh, three, three formulas that we're going to talk about. So, ngayon, pag-usapan muna natin yung concept of leverage. Okay? So, uh, on our previous modules, uh, pinag-usapan natin, kunyari, EURUSD, ito po yung exchange rate niya, tapos tumaas po si Euro, naturally, bab, tataas po yung base currency. And then by Friday, yan po yung exchange rate. Now, ang difference po niyan, 800 pip. Okay? Now, here, in-explain din natin na, okay, kunyari, you have a $100, alam mo na mag-tataas uh, si Euro, so papapalit natin siya sa exchange rate na yan. And then from there, uh, ito na po yung exchange rate niya using this, uh, ito na po yung value ni Euro using this rate. And then pagdating ng Friday, uh, ibebenta nyo na ulit siya against the US dollar kasi mas mataas na yung presyo niya. Okay? So, may earning ka na actually $5. So, this is my question. Ibig sabihin ba, nung Monday, uh, Monday to Friday, na 800 pip, $5 lang ang na-earn na, ang na ko? Right? Kasi, 105, so $5 lang. So, magkano ba ang $5 sa Philippine peso? Mga around 200 pesos. 800 pip yung movement. Ang average pip movement per day is roughly around 100 pip. So, ang ibig ba sabihin niyan, para magkaroon ako ng earning na $5, I have to wait probably in weeks para maabot ko yung $5 na yun. Or maybe yung $100 is not the ideal money to invest. So, what if I don't have that kind of ideal money? So normally, ito na yung mga questions na hindi ko muna sinagot pa dun sa module 1 kasi it's important that you understand the concept first of the language. But now, here we're going to talk about the leverage na. So in concept, leverage is actually the ability to do more with less. Yun yung talagang uh, general ibig sabihin ng leverage. But in terms of Forex, what happens is that your minimum investment can actually have a capacity to trade a certain bigger amount of investment. So here, parang lumalabas tuloy si brokerage house will act as a loan in a minimum investment na ibibigay niyo. Okay? So halimbawa, ganito po siya. So kunyari, you have a minimum deposit of $100. Okay? Now, kunyari, ang leverage ng broker house is 1 is to 1,000. Leverage can be different depending on the broker house. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, pwede nyo tanongin si broker, uh, ano ba leverage nyo? Ano yung maximum leverage nyo? Okay? Is this the leverage of FBS? We can actually go as high as 1 is to 2,000. 
Okay? Pero for now, just for the concept, anong ibig sabihin nito? Kung ito ang leverage ni brokerage house, i ibig sabihin, you have the capacity to trade $100,000. So, yun po yung, yung nangyayari doon. Okay? So, it means that the brokerage house will lend you $100,000 with a minimum investment of $100. Okay. Now, again, na-mention ko kanina, their leverage will depend on your brokerage house. Merong 1 is to 500, 1 is to 1,000, 1 is to 2,000, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, ito ang basic formula natin. Ang leverage mo will be times to actual trading amount in units. Yun po yung minimum investment niya. Okay? So, practice natin. Kunyari, ang ideal na gusto nyong trade amount in units is 100,000. Okay. Ang leverage ni broker, 1 is to 1,000. So ngayon, alam nyo, ang minimum deposit nyo is 100. Mm -hmm. okay. So halimbawa naman, sir, gusto nyo pa rin mag-trade ng 100,000, pero ang leverage nyo or leverage ni broker is 1 is to 100 lang. So ang minimum investment is actually 1,000. Okay? Mm -hmm. So how about... 1,000, pero ang leverage ni, Cly, uh, ni broker is 1 is to 2,000. So, ano yung minimum investment mo? $50. Okay? So, ngayon, paano kung halimbawa gusto ko mag-trade ng 100,000, ang leverage lang ni broker is 100, uh, 1 is to 1,000, uh, pwede ba ako mag-deposit ng $1,000? Pwede. Remember, yung kaninang pinag-uusapan natin, this is just minimum deposit. So, you could actually go over. Pero, dadagdagan na natin, sir, yung uh, vocabularies nyo. Okay? So, ngayon, technically, ito yung dineposit mo, ito yung leverage, ito yung actual trading amounts in units, yung margin, or yung minimum investment, 100. Okay? It will be called margin na. And then, you have a free margin of 900. So, ganyan yung nangyayari. Okay? So now, babalikan natin yung concept kanina. Ito yung one, uh, yung exchange rate. Nag-analyze tayo. Uh, tumaas kunyari si euro over time. So base currency will go up as well. And then by Friday, ayan po yung naging exchange rate niya. Difference is 800 pip. So now, you have a minimum investment of $100. But remember, we're using leverage. So, you're not actually trading $100. You're actually trading using this leverage ni broker, $100,000. Yung $100,000, yun yung actually papapalit mo sa actual exchange rate na to. And then, pag kinonvert natin, 72,463 euro. Okay? Now, pagdating ng Friday, tumaas yung exchange rate. So, yung leverage investment mo, pwede mo na ngayon siyang i-trade back sa US dollar, which actually have an earning of 5,797. So, yun po yung earning nyo talaga, using the power of leverage. Okay? Pero sabi natin, hindi naman tumatakbo ng 800 pip per day, eh, 100 lang. So, bawasan natin. So, minimum investment, $100. You're using a leverage of 1 is to 1,000. Your actual investment is 100,000. Ayan po yung ititrade nyo. Trinade nyo na siya sa this price, which is 72,463 euros. And then by Friday, you trade it back kasi mas mataas na po yung exchange rate. So, ang earning mo is 724. So, in just a particular day, do you have the capacity to have an earning of 724 dollars? Okay? So, totoo po yan. So, that's minimum, no? Diba? Nasa minimum ba tayo kanina? Uh, when you say minimum? Na $100? Yes. Nasa minimum po so tayo minimum $100. Yes. Pero, um, let us finish further. Kasi hindi pa natin pinag-usapan yung mga implications yan. Paano pag lost? Okay. Okay. So, different. Pero if it, it, it's a gain? Yun po. Yun actual earning nyo po yung $700. $100. Mm -hmm. May gain ka ng 764 724. 720. Yes. In a good day. Yes, in a good day. Yun po yung earnings na ni trader. Later, i-explain ko rin po kung paano naman po kumikita si broker. Kasi normally, questions din po yan ng mga nan. 
Yeah. Well, uh, hindi na ho siya kukuha doon sa earnings nyo. The difference between the buying rate and the selling rate po, magkakaroon ng earnings si broker. Later, I'll explain ko yan. Okay? So, sounds too good to be true, but remember, the catch is, you have to know your analysis. You have to make a right analysis. What if mali yung analysis natin? Well, ito yung exchange rate, nakabuy position tayo, pero bumaba po si exchange rate. Okay, so tingnan natin yung example. Ito po yung minimum investment natin. Ito po yung leverage natin. And then, ito po yung actual trading amount in units. So pag pinapalit natin, 700, uh, 72 for 1,463. Pagdating mo by Friday, bumaba po yung exchange rate. You actually have a loss of negative 724. Okay, so actual earning nyo kanina, actual loss din ang pwedeng mangyari. Pero hindi naman po kayo aabot na ng negative 60. Bago pa po umabot ng 100, kasi remember, this is 100 pip difference. Bago pa po umabot ng 100, nag zero na siya. Okay? So the next thing na pwede natin gawin is, paano ba natin calculate yung actual earnings natin per pip? Para malaman ko kung dapat ba na nakabay ako ng 100 pip or dapat 10 pips lang. Okay, so we're going to calculate na yung pip profit or loss natin. Okay lang ho ba sir? Medyo seryoso na po yung <laughs> discussions na. Ice lang, ice lang. Keep going. Okay, so now, these are the formulas that I will explain. There's a different uh, formula between for a base currency earning, and then there's a different formula for a code currency earning. Okay, so one pip, pag sa base currency, Uh, over the exchange rate, tas your actual trading amount in unit equals actual pip value. Bakit kailangan difference si base currency and code currency? Remember, if you open an account, you open an account in US dollar. And sometimes, US dollar is uh, placed base currency or sometimes it's placed as code currency. So, magkaiba po yung computation niya. So, for code currency, one pip, exchange rate, tapos actual trading amount in units, and then itatimes niyo ulit siya sa exchange rate for actual PIP value. Okay? To explain further, kunyari, tinitignan po natin USD JPY. Now, si USD is base currency. Uh, also, for clarification, for JPY at saka gold, two decimal places lang po. Kasi po yung mga PIP value natin before is four decimal places. No? So, those for other currencies like USDCAD, Pero for the case of JPY at saka gold, 2 decimal lang siya. Having said that, 0.01 lang. Kasi 1 pip. And then, yung exchange rate and then actual trading amount in units. Now, uh, since naka-leverage tayo and then ito yung actual trading amount na uh, tinitrade natin, so yan po yung calculations niya. 100,000 equals $8 or 8.35 per pip. So, ibig sabihin, every pip movement 8.35 dollars, 8.35 or pag mali po yung analysis natin, nababawasan po kayo ng 8.35 dollars, 8.35 dollars. Or pagdating naman po sa code currency, baliktad naman po. Euro USD po yung tinitingnan natin, no? So, ngayon, 4 digit na siya. Kasi 1 pip. And then, ito po yung exchange rate, times pa rin po sa actual trading amount in units, and then i-times po natin siya sa exchange rate which is 99.99 dollars per pip. O round off na lang natin sa 10 para mas madali i-explain. So now, babalikan natin sir yung nangyari kanina. Ito po yung amount na na-deposit natin. Alam na natin yung value per pip ng euro is 10 dollar per pip. Okay, so how many number of pips bago kayo na-wipe out? 10 dollar. 10 pips. Hindi na po siya umabot ng 100 pip. Okay. So now, hindi pa natin pinag-uusapan yung transactions cost or tinatawag po natin yung spread. Okay? So, hold on to that thought. Uh, hindi pa natin kasi na-explain yung lots. Pero at least ngayon na marunong na kayong mag-calculate ng PIP, at least al naintindihan nyo na siya, later i-explain natin kung paano nyo siya i-manage. Okay? Mga sirs, lalabas na po ako. Thank you. Uh, PIP, profit or loss? Ngayon, sir, pag-uusapan na natin yung bid and ask. Kasi, na-mention natin kanina, hindi pa kumikita si broker. Okay? 
So, to explain this further, nakakita na ho ba kayo ng ganito? You see it at malls, mm-hmm. sa bangko, or even sa mga money changer. Parang may nakasulat na we sell at, we buy at. Kunyara, euro, diba? magkaiba po yung rate niya. Okay. So, ganyan din po yung concept niya dun sa trading platform natin. Uh, to make uh, to make a simple example for uh, dito sa slides na to kunyari bumili kayo ng sasakyan uh, this is a Toyota Wigo kunyari yung last time kung chinex si Toyota Wigo nasa around 500 yan okay now for some reason pagkabili nyo siya ngayong araw na to gusto mo na siyang ibenta uh, pag binenta nyo ba siya sir ngayon mm-hmm. mabibenta nyo rin ba siya sa ganitong halaga mm-hmm. hindi na lalo na kung kotse Yes. So, iyon po yung ibig sabihin ng buying rate and selling rate. Magkaiba ho lagi siya. Especially if you're doing it on trading. So, you knowing that concept, i-apply natin siya rito. Kung halimbawa, sir, kunyari ikaw to, tapos you're going to the bank, and then we're talking about the euro. Okay? Now, if you'd like to buy euro, they are the one selling, you are the one buying. So, you are the one asking. If you're asking to buy a euro for the bank, they are the one selling. Okay? So, if you are asking for, uh, if you're uh, have, uh, parang hihingi ka ng asking price nila, ito po yung presyo nila. Now, kunyari, balik ta rin natin, you have euro. Pero, gusto mo siyang ibenta sa banko. Bibilin lang nila yung euro mo sa ganitong presyo. Okay? So, now, if maiintinda natin yung buong konsepto ng pagtitrade sa sa foreign, uh, foreign exchange. Um, pag nag-enter kayo ng market, so it's a new order. And then, pag nag-close kayo, close order. Okay? If you're buying euro, and nakikita nyo na sir that there's an asking rate and the bidding rate, which one is the rate that you'll consider first? You're buying euro. So you're asking. Yes. So ito po yung rate na kukunin nyo muna. So, nasa, nag-enter na kayo ng market. Hindi gumalaw si market kunyari. Pero, gusto nyo na i-close yung order nyo. In our concept before, you buy now, and then you're going to sell later. Okay? So, you buy at this price, mm-hmm. pero pag close nyo na siya, you're going to sell it at this price. Pag close Yes. Okay? These are two transactions, no? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, two transactions, pero at the same pair. Uh, same pair. Uh, yung close order, ibig sabihin lang... Naka-out ka na ng market. Oo, uh, uh, naka-out na. And if I were to sell... Yun na yung price. price. Uh, mm-hmm. You're going to consider the bidding price na. Okay? So, balik ta rin natin yung sitwasyon, sir. You're selling at a pair USD CHF. And ito po yung presyo niya. If you're selling, ano po yung price dito, sir, na i-consider nyo? Bid price. Yes. So, mag-enter ka ng market at this price. Mm-hmm. Kunyari, hindi gumalaw si market, magka-close siya sa ganito. Okay? So, ganun pa rin po yung kay uh, GBPUSD. If you're buying, you're going to consider the asking price, 1.5686. And then, pag close nyo siya on that day, bidding price, ganyan din po. And then, so on and so forth po pagdating po sa USDJP1. Okay. Now, yung difference po niya lagi is the spread. It's mm-hmm. also called the transaction cost. This is existing to Forex. Lahat po, generally accepted po yan. Mm-hmm. Kasi yan din po kung kumikita si money exchange. Mm-hmm. Yung mga local exchanger, kaya po nila sinasabi na may difference ang buying rate at selling rate. Si Banco. Okay. So, dun po kami kumikita. Doon po si broker kumikita. So, every time you make an exchange, yung offset difference nun, yun po yung napupunta kay broker or napupunta sa man exchange. Okay? And then, the rest of the trade, actually, earnings nyo na po yun. Okay? So, now, uh, kung ganito lang po yung transaction na walang nangyayari, may earnings nga si broker, pero wala namang earnings si trader. So, the profit has to be realized over time. So, ngayon, sir, that dahil alam nyo na, sir, yung concept ng bid and ask, iko-combine natin, sir, lahat ng mga konseptong natutunan nyo. You invested $100, okay? And you actually have a broker who has a leverage of 1 is to 1,000. And so, technically, you're trading 100,000, okay? 
Now, you want to buy USDCAD. And then, ito yung asking price, bidding, bidding price niya. If you're buying this pair, you'll consider the asking price. So, from this price, papapalit niyo po siya. Ayan po yung kinalabasan ng US dollar. Now, over time, gumalaw po yung market. At may difference pa rin naman si asking price at si bidding price. Ngayon, dahil sa tumaas na siya, technically over time, pareho siyang tumaas yung parehong presyo. So, you're going to close it na. If you're going to close it na, you're selling it on a bidding price na. And then from there, ko-convert nyo na siya, ito po yung earning. So, from the difference, nagkaroon ng earning si broker, but at the same time, you already have an earning as well. Of 174.83. Okay. So, ngayon, pag-aralan naman natin, balikan natin yung PIP value. Uh, this is just a typographical error. It's supposed to be CAD. Okay? So, uh, PIP, kasi 0 0.001, ayan po yung exchange rate. And then, the actual trading amount in units natin is 100,000. Ang PIP value is 8.7413. Okay? Kung yan po yung value, times 20 PIP movement, bakit 20 PIP? Ang difference neto to neto is only 20 pip. Okay? So, 8.7413 times 20, same earning. Okay? So, yan po yung realization ng pip value po ng movement natin. So, ngayon, ang kulang na lang po is lots. Are there any ways na, kasi, like for example, over 20 pip lang, ang potential earning ko, 174. Pero yung investment ko, $100. Paano pag mali yung analysis ko? Di wipe out pa rin yung account ko. Are there any way na mabawasan natin yung risk? Meron po. Okay, so pag-usapan na po natin yan using LOTS. LOTS is a way of interpreting your leverage. You can deleverage yourself. Hindi necessarily mean na 100,000 units lagi ang tinitrade nyo. Pwede nyo yung bawasan yun just to be safer. Okay? So, sa trading platform natin, ito po yung nakikita nyo. Okay? So, kung nyari, meron tayong buy order, sell order po, sa gitna, ito po yung latage size nyo. Okay? Can, it's also considered as number of shares. So, kung nyari, bumili ka sa isang kumpanya ng 100,000 of shares, tumaas yung value nun, sometimes feeling mo na 10,000 shares lang yung ibibenta ko, okay lang, kikip ko muna yung iba, baka tumaas pa rin eh. But at the same time, earnings na ako. Ganun din po si Lutz. Remember, pag naka-leverage ka, 100,000 units ang leverage mo. Pero you could actually control it. Pwedeng 10,000 units lang ang pwede kong i-trade for this pair. Right? So now, pag halimbawa pong 1 lot, naka-100,000 units po tayo. Ngayon sir, pag in-adjust niyan to 0 0.01, naka-10,000 tayo. Pag in-adjust niyan to 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.01 naka 1,000 units po ang trading natin. Pwede nyo lagay 0.5, 50,000 units. 5, kung medyo malakas po ang loob natin, 500,000 units po siya. Okay? So ngayon, i-apply po natin yan sa lahat po po na mga na-explain natin kanina. Ito po yung example natin kanina, USDCAD. And, we have a minimum investment of $100. Um, pag naka 1 lot tayo, you're technically trading 100,000. And then, if you're buying, you're going to use the asking price. Pag pinapalit nyo po yan, 87,000. And then, over a period of time, if you close it na, you're going to close it at the bidding price na nag-appreciate na from the previous price. You have an earning of 174.83. Pero ngayon, sir, ang gagawin natin, i-control na natin yung leverage kasi risk feeling nyo, risky pa yung ganon. Paano pag nagkamali tayo ng analysis? Eh, newbie trader pa lang ako. So, yung $100 mo, i-adjust natin ng latage size. Gawin natin 0.1. Technically, yung amount of trading in units mo, 10,000. If 10,000 units ang tinitrade mo, and then buying ka sa asking price na to, pag kinonvert mo yan, 8,741 lang siya. And then, over a period of time, 8,741, pag alimbawang klinos mo na siya sa bidding price, your earnings is actually $17 only. 
So this is a way to minimize your risk. It might also a way to minimize your earning potential, but it's better to have a detailed plan later sa mga, sa mga future modules natin, pag-uusapan natin yung trading plan, to understand that hindi mo kailangan magmadali. Trading is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So we have to have a plan to achieve a certain valuation of your investment. Okay? So we're in this situation, binabaan natin yung risk, but at the same time, bababa rin yung earning potential. So, ito yung, again, typographical error, si AD po yan. So, yan pa rin yung PIF value, yan pa rin yung exchange rate, but, since binabaan natin yung leverage natin, yung actual trading amount in units natin is already 10,000. And then, from there, yung PIF value natin, dati, $8, ngayon, 0.8 na lang siya. And then, 20 PIF movement, iyan po yung earnings nyo. $17.48. So, yun po yung mga ways to understand and to how to manage your investment by uh, minimizing your risk as well. So now, um, normally, pag ina-explain ko sa clients ko, uh, parang kinakabahan na sila dahil ang dami ko computation. You don't actually need to uh, compute those formulas. I need to explain the formulas for sa inyo para yung mga tools na to magagamit nyo siya. Okay? So this is the first tool. Uh, this is Baby Pips. Ito po yung link. So, the moment na nag-email po ako sa inyo, pakicheck na lang po siya. Mm-hmm. Now, ang, ang pangalan po ng tool is Pip Value Calculator. Okay? Mm-hmm. Notice, the pair is USDCAD, pero ang position size ko is 100,000. So, ibig sabihin, naka one lot siya. Mm-hmm. Tama? So, ngayon na, sir, kasi kung hindi ko pa inexplain before yung mga concept, hindi nyo po mm-hmm. maintindihan kung bakit, bakit ano yung 100,000 na yun? Eh, $100 lang naman yung ini-invest ko. So, ngayon, alam nyo na siya na position size nyo, 100,000, ito po yung price nyo, and then ito po yung USD. And then, PIP value nyo po is 0.87413. Okay? So, so you could lot. use... Yes, naka one lot siya. So, ngayon, uh, you could use this uh, to analyze kung magkano po yung nire-risk nyo. And then, pwede nyo nalang bawasan yung position size nyo, kunyari 10,000, para malaman nyo na baka uh, lesser risk din in terms of PIP value. And then from here, you could also use an um, FBS Trader Calculator. Uh, ito po yung link. And then from there, meron po tayo, taka one lap. And then ito po yung leverage ni broker. Sa amin kasi at the maximum, one is to 2,000, but you have the right to deleverage. Okay, so kayo po may option. So kunyari nag-deleverage kayo, notice, ito po yung position size. So one lot, one is to 1,000, 100,000 yung position size ko. And yung point value ko is $10. Now, uh, you might be asking, bakit 123.85 yung margin? Eh, di ba dapat 100 lang yung margin yan? Kasi meron na po siyang spread. Okay, so nilagay na po yung spread for that. Okay? And then also, uh, we also have the position size calculator. Anong ginagawa ni position size calculator? It will suggest how many lots ang ilalagay nyo. Nakita po kayo ng 1.00, then, then 0.1, and then 0.01. No? Yun po yung mga nakita nyo. So, kunyari, ang minimum investment nyo is $500. Ang gusto nyo lang i-risk per trade, 5%, but uh, for newbie traders, we recommend 2% lang. Uh, later, sa mga susunod na modules, explain namin kung bakit. Pero, kunyari, 2%. And then, you made an analysis, just to be safe, gusto mo yung stop loss mo, would be around 120 pips. So, from there, ito po yung pair. Pag kinalculate niya po, ito po yan. Pag naglagay po siya ng number dito, ibig sabihin, one lot po ang pinag-uusapan. So, kunyari, naglagay siya ng one, so one lot. Pero pag naglagay po siya ng number dito, ang pinag-uusapan po natin, uh, si Forex has the trading platform to always go in and out, in and out. Okay? Normally, si stocks kasi, Pwede naman siya mag in and out, but it's not as frequent as the uh, as forex market. Okay. Ah, uh, continue ako sir. Ah. Okay, so ito yung isang tool uh, na pinag-usapan natin na kung inyari yung mga numbers dito represents kung ano yung ilalagay niyo sa lotage size niyo. So si standard lot, pag may nakita kayo diyang 1, so 1 lot lang siya. 2 2 lots. And then from micro lot 
pag nakakita kayo 1 ang nilagay niya, 0.1 or 2, 0.2. Si microlat, yung pinakadulo, uh, it's actually 0.01 lat. Pero in this case, kung ito po, po yung nakasulat, 0.02. Uh, but, remember na ito yung in-adjust niya based on the risk percentage na nilagay nyo. Okay? So, maximum po si 0.02. You could actually have an option na 0.01 lang yung lot kung gusto nyo pang bukasan. Pwede naman yan. Pero, uh, this is just like a calculation to suggest the 5% risk percentage. Okay? So, dahil po sa mga alam nyo na po yung mga basic concepts natin, please use yung mga tools for mga further uh, approach nyo po sa trading. Now, since alam nyo na po yung mga concept ngayon, tuturuan na po natin kayo on how to execute everything on your basic software or your platform. So, MT4. Yes, sa MT4. So, ito na po yung ating MT4. So, I'll give you first an instruction. Kunyari, nakapag-register na kayo, nakapag-open na kayo ng account. Um, gusto nyo na hong mag-trade. Okay? So, once you download your trading platform, uh, di ba pag nag-register tayo, the website will give you account name. Uh, account number and trading password. So, ang gagawin niya po, you're going to click file. Lalabas po yung login to trade account. So, pakiclick lang din po yun. And then, ito po yung lalabas. Okay, so, uh, there's a dialog box na lalabas. Pakilagay lang po yung account number and then yung trading password. Mo. Okay, and then, pwede na po kayo mag-login. After nyan, lalabas na po yung trading platform. Okay, so now, ang pag-uusapan po natin is to how to execute a uh, 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 an order kung gusto nyo nang mag-buy or mag-sell. Okay, so are there different kinds of executions? For entering the market, we have the instant execution and pending orders. For exiting the market, we have stop loss and take profit. Okay, so now, if it's an instant execution, kung ano po yung presyo ngayon ng market, na let's say kunyari pinag-usapan natin Euro USD and then gusto nyo siyang mag-buy na sa ganitong presyo you could actually click buy a sell or buy so at that price na siya magbabay okay and then automatic na sa market na po kayo or an alternate execution kunyari ito po yung trading platform natin nandyan pwede nyo kong i-double click kunyari si USD JPY lalabas po itong dialog box na to naka instant execution po kayo and then, pwede ho kayong mag-buy or sell. And then, automatic, magbabay na ho siya. Now, kunyari, pag nakabay ka na, so nasa loob na po siya, no? Dito pong area to, makikita niyo po yung mga trades niyo. Okay? So, pag halimbawa, kung may number na lumalabas dito, this is, naka-enter na po kayo sa market. Okay? So, I'll show you kung ano po yung itsura niya. Ayan, so no, natamaan na yung ano ko. So, kunyari, nag-setup na po ako. Uh, this one is GBP USD. So, lipat ko lang po. So, kunyari, nag-execute ako ng buy. buy. Okay, buy. Lalabas po yung mga ganito. Yung line na to. Okay? Let's buy. Yes. After nyan, ito pong uh, lower area, it's uh, a way to monitor pag naka-enter na kayo sa market. So, yung mga uh, executions na nasa above ng itong area to, it means like, this is an instant execution na nasa loob na ho kayo ng market. Okay? So, ito po yung itsura yung kaninang pinakita ko. Ito po siya. Okay? Now, kunyari, yung instant execution nyo, whether buy or sell, nasa loob na po kayo, and then ito na po yung lumabas, if you like to close, kunyari, na gusto nyo na magkaroon na kayo ng profit ng ganito, $2.50, pwede nyo na siyang i-close, i-click nyo lang po yung X. So, naka-exit naka na ho kayo ng market from that. Okay? So, yun lang po yung instant execution. On that current price, uh, magbabay or sell na kayo. Pero what if, gusto nyo na magbay kayo on a certain price level? Kunyari, ito yung current price ngayon, ayaw mo mag-buy or sell dyan. Gusto mo mag-buy sa ganitong level na to. Yun po yung tawag sa pending order. Okay? So, kunyari, ito po yung instant execution, ito po yung pending. 
So, how to execute a pending order? So, ito po ulit yung mga trading pairs natin. Ito po yung itsura nyan dyan. So, pwede po kayo mag-double click dyan. So, double click. Kunyari, in this case, USDJPY. Tapos, lalabas na po itong dialog box na to. Now, kanina po, yung dialog box na nakita natin, naka-instant execution po yan. Okay? So, i-click nyo lang po siya, lalagay nyo po ng pending order. Okay, and then once na pag nilagay niyo pong pending order, there are four types of pending execution. Okay, so you have buy limit, buy stop, sell limit, sell stop. Okay, so we have actually four types of pending orders. So, uh, explain ko po muna to ng maigi, pero uh, I want you to para not get confused kung ano ba yung buy or sell. Okay. So, pag halimbawa kung the market is going up, lagi pong execution natin is buy or you're buying the pair. Mm -hmm. So, wag po tayong uh, makonfuse na para ho hindi kayo malito kung ano yung difference ni buy stop at saka ni buy limit, always remember na kapag buy, pataas po ang expectation natin sa market. Kapag sell, pababa po yung expectations natin. Okay, so ano lang ba yung difference ng pending execution nila? So, si buy stop, kunyari, ito yung example, ito ho yung actual price ngayon. Okay. Clarify nga ulit doon sa, ano, as buy, pag in-expect mong tumakas. Yes. Kasi, bibili ka nun, mm -hmm. para, pag tumakas ang value niya, you're going to sell it over time. So, nauna muna mag-buy bago mag-sell. Pero, the idea also is, bumili ka before it goes up, ano? Yes, Parang ganun. correct. Before okay. it goes up. Buy. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, now, uh, we're going to talk about buy stop. Ito, sir, yung current market price. Ngayon, ayaw mong mag-buy sa ganitong presyo. Gusto mo sa ditong level na to. Okay. Bakit? So, ito po yung pending ba order na Mas mataas yun, di ba? Yes. Uh -huh. Bakit gusto mong mag-buy sa mas mataas? Okay. In our next module, let's say mm -hmm. yung mga technical analysis, mm -hmm. we were able to plot certain price level that would actually provide us a good forecast. Mm -hmm. Katulad ng kanina, yung, yung pinakita ko sa iyo, sir, yung analyst mm -hmm. nang sinasabi niya na punyari sa Australian dollar, US dollar, 0.71 na break na yung susunod na target level is 0.69. Sometimes, those levels are also the basis to place a good pending order. So, in this case, wala ka pang sense na uptrend? Oo. Uh -oh. no? Pero, kunyari, kunyari nagkaroon siya ng, uh, what do you call this, resistance level dito, sir. Mm -hmm. Tapos, pag in-expect niya na mag-break na to, alam niya na mas magandang dito ako mag-buy position. Kasi alam niya na, pag lumagpas na yan dyan, dire diretso na yan. Why not at the resistance level? It's your choice actually, sir. But normally, on an experienced traders, pag halimbawang nasa level siya ng resistance, sometimes tinitest muna yan. Baka mag-bounce back. Oo. Hindi naman bounce back, pero nagtitest pa siya. Hmm. Paano, sir, pag halimbawang tinamaan, tapos gumalaw pa? Hmm. So, it's actually not yet a good position or a good timing to buy. Hmm. So, medyo nilalagyan nila ng konting offset mm -hmm. to make a confirmation na pag tumuloy-tuloy, so, nakabay position sila. Sure na, yes. I mean, higher probability na... Tataas na siya. So, sometimes ganun ng ginagawa na forex trade. So, here, uh, by stop, it's actually a placement above the market price. Yun lang siya. But remember, buy pa rin. So, meaning to say, your expectation is the market is going up. Okay, so, yan lang po yung concept ng buy stop. Ano yung difference ni buy limit? Okay? Si buy limit is a position of a pending order beneath the current market price. But remember, ang guide natin, buy. So, if halimbawa na bumaba siya at tinamaan niya to, ano po yung ini-expect nating tataas na uh, mangyayari? Yes. So, yun yung difference nila. Si buy stop is a situation in which na you're expecting na pag lumabot na siya sa price na yon magbe-break siya upward. Buy, buy stop. Si buy limit is a situation na positioning siya sa baba, pag tinamaan niya, magba-bounce and then go all the way 
upward pa rin siya. Mas malaki yung profit may that. Ano? Well, depende nyo sir sa analysis. So, okay, so yun po yung position niya. Sometimes kasi, it gets confusing pag binaliktad ko na. Paano pag ang pinag-uusapan na natin, sell stop na? Sell stop. Okay, so remember, ang guide pa rin natin, sell. So meaning going to down say, down going market. down pa rin siya. So this is the current market price. We place a pending order underneath in an expectations na pag bumaba yung market, in expectation na natin na mag-break. Kasi we're expecting it to go down. Tama, sir? That's why you're selling. Yes. Now, si sell limit naman, sir, balik, dad, nasa taas siya. Okay? So, kunyari, ito yung current market price, yung positioning ng pending order nasa taas, pero uh, what you're expecting is pag tumama siya, magba-bounce. And then, bababa na siya. Okay, so, medyo nagigets nyo ba yung difference ng buy, stop, buy limit? So, when you sell, ang projection is it's going down. Yes. Uh, para hindi lang kayo malito. Kasi the difference lang naman between a stop and a limit is the positioning of the pending order. Okay? So, pwede kasi sir na, halimbawa, wala to, tapos naka-placement siya dyan. Paano pag ang expectations ko pataas? So, this is actually buy stop. Right? Eh, paano pag ang expectations ko pababa? So, nangyayari na sell limit to. So, yung positioning niya, sometimes confusing kapag hindi nyo alam yung concept between the difference between a stop and a limit. Pag nalilito kayo, just use the buy and sell as a guide. At the end of the day, yan yung tinitignan yung movement of the market. Okay? Okay po ba? Uh, may mga questions po ba? Or first time nyo pong narinig ta, so kailangan okay. i-internalize. <laughs> Naisip ko yung why, why wait to sell doon sa sell limit. Mm -hmm. Why not sell immediately? Ah, okay. So, I'll show you how I make analysis. So, in our technical analysis, sometimes we plot certain price level, katulad po nung example nung, uh, nung analyst na nakita natin. No? So, kunyari, these are my levels. Currently, the price is in here. If I buy or sell here, I don't have much indication that it is going up or down based on the price level. Okay? So, what will I do? I would rather not sell at this level. I could execute a pending order beneath it. So, kunyari, ang expectations ko based on my analysis, pag nilagpasan nyo to, bababa na siya. So, dito, pwede ako mag-execute ng sell stop. Tama? Okay, so sell stop. Pero I'm not too sure. Remember, I'm doing a sound analysis. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's an absolute analysis. Mm -hmm. But, safe pa rin ako. Bakit? Pending order yan eh. Pag hindi dumaan yung price dyan, hindi ako, wala akong problema. Hindi mag enter yung market. So, pwedeng I could execute a sell stop here. Pwede rin, mm -hmm. while I'm waiting, kung tama yung analysis ko dyan, I could execute a buy stop here. Buy stop? Uh -huh. Kasi ito yung level na tinitignan buy ko. Buy stop, sell stop. Dito, sir, sa taas. Buy stop, sir. sir. Kasi so, pag nilag... hindi mo alam where it's going, kumbaga. Oh, kunyari, sir, yung analysis mo overall pababa. Mm -hmm. Pero, uh, since an experienced trader ka, hindi ka magre-rely totally na ganun. Kasi it's mm -hmm. not an absolute science. Mm -hmm. But what you do is create a sound approach. Mm -hmm. So, dito sa loob, pwedeng hindi ako mag-trade dyan, dito na lang ako sa baba. So, underneath that line. So, dito, sell stop ako kasi I'm expecting the market to go down. Now, currently, this is the price. What if my analysis goes wrong? Tumaas siya. And then, nilagpasan niya to. This is another price level, right? Yes. So, pwede akong mag-buy stop dito to still actually capture the market here. So, pwede ho yung mga ganun. So, that's how Sometimes we do our approach. It doesn't necessarily mean na buy or sell ng buy or sell ulit lagi. Kaya nagiging medyo uh, uh, systematic na yung approach namin. Hindi rin kami nag-speculate. There are no speculations there. We do analysis um, properly. Actually, now that you've mentioned the word speculation, mm -hmm. in most books that I've seen, American, mm -hmm. 
when it comes to forex, it's always under speculative investments. Yes. But right now, the way I see it, it's, I mean, it's not about speculation. I mean, mga yes. analysis that you do. Correct. Um, they might say speculations, mm -hmm. but the difference is how you approach the market. Mm -hmm. So, kanyari, sabi ng analyst, oh, overall, bearish ang US dollar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alam namin bearish. But, kailangan kami mag-enter ng market. Yes. How I entered the market might be different on how the analyst will mm -hmm. enter the market. Pero dun sa mga books that I've seen, actually, they equate speculation with gambling. Ah, uh, so, okay. So, uh, what can you say to that? Now, Forex is gambling. Well, kami, kami, kami sir, uh, we don't want to gamble. That's mm -hmm. one. Ha, ang problema lang kasi, sometimes, unconsciously, nag-gamble sila. What do I mean by this? There is a difference between a justified win and an unjustified win. In our future mod uh, modules, we do our trading analysis in which that we actually define when are we going to exit the market. Okay, so ganun kami. So yun, justified win yun. Why? Kasi may plano kami up to the point na kung kailan kami mag-exit, even yung profit namin. Kunyari, yun na yung plan mo, hindi mo ngayon sinusunod most of the time si plan mo. Pero, earning ka pa rin. That would resolve to unjustified win. Okay? If most of the time, hindi mo sinusunod yung plan mo, at lagi kang nag unjustified win, it actually practice your mind subconsciously to not follow any rules. Eventually, leading to unconscious gambling. So, yun yung sinasabi nila. Kasi, nasasanay ka, unconsciously, hindi mo lang nare-realize na, oh, nag-gamble na so, yun yung, yun yung uh, something that we need to monitor that sometimes we advise all of our clients, mag-monitor ka, mag-trading journal ka. Kailangan alam mo kung kailan ka nag-approach at kailangan ka nag-exit. Kailangan malaman mo kung bakit hindi na-abot yung target profit mo. Kasi it's still a sound analysis. At the end of the day, i-monitor mo yan, bakit mali yung target profit level ko? Baka masyadong unreachable na. Baka hanggang dyan lang naman talaga yung price pero taas masyado ng target profit so, yun po yung nangyayari for that. Okay. So, ay, okay. Uh, wait lang, sir. Ako, okay. Kuha lang ako ng chart. Yung sabi nung, uh, tawag to, nung isang nagtatanong is, okay, so ganito yung amount ko, ganito yung trade, uh, ito yung narealize ko sa stocks. Pwede bang mag-long-term trade, mag-long-term investment din ako sa Forex? Di sabi namin, uh, no. Depende sa pananaw. If you feel that yung certain amount of investments that you have in stocks, let's say, kunyari, 100,000, uh, it doesn't have the capacity for you to go long-term to Forex. But what you do is set pending executions to always go in and out, in and out, in and out of the market on sound approach. So, yun po yung difference niya. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, shall we continue? So, yun po yung difference ng going in the market. So, there's an instant execution, there's a pending execution. The next discussion na gagawin natin, well, uh, pag pinadala ko po sa inyo to, you could use this as a guide kung nalilito pa kayo for difference between buy stop and sell limit, sell limit and sa, uh, sell stop and buy limit. So, now, ang pag-uusapan na ho natin would be how to exit the market. But before that, i-explain ko lang, pag may pending orders po kayo, so, wala pa kayo sa market, pero in-execute nyo na siya. Naka-place na rin po siya. Pero, nasa baba po siya ng area to. Okay? The moment po na tinamaan yung level na yun, tsaka pa lang po siya nasa loob ng market. So, ito po yung itsura niya. Yung difference niya. So, here on my trading platform, this one is an actual execution na. So, nasa loob na siya ng market. This one is a pending order. What is TP? Uh, target profit, sir. SL, short uh, long? Stop loss. Ah, stop loss. Uh, stop loss po yan. Okay, so here, explain ko po kung ano po yung ibig sabihin nila. And if you want to close your trade, pwede naman po. Explain nyo lang din po siya. Okay, so ito na po yung stop loss and then take profit. Uh, these are executions when you can exit or close your order. Okay, so every time that you made sound analysis, you also want to make sure that you have risk management. 
Okay, assuming, assuming you are a newbie trader and then you have uh, wrong analysis, kunyari lang. You always, at least we advise always our clients to have a stop loss. A stop loss is a situation in which that if you made a mistake on your analysis, hanggang dito lang po yung losses ko. Okay, hindi po, hindi ko mauubos yung buong account ko. Okay, on this approach. Having said that, you also define it by click right click and then uh, lalagay nyo yung difference kunyari ang gusto nyo from the current market price ngayon mga 120 pips remember this is in points so kaya nilagay namin 1200 pero 120 pips po yan so yung difference ng points and pips na pinag-usapan natin ng module 1 and then copy as and then ilalabas na po niya yung price dito so kunyari ang current market price is ito. So, bababa ko lang po siya. Copy as. And then, imumodify nyo siya. Lalabas na po siya. And then, makakakita po kayo ng red line na ganito. Okay. So, if you see yung mga green line, these lines are when you enter the market. Okay. The red dotted line or yung mga group and line na ganito are when you exit the market, regardless if it's a stop loss or take profit. Okay, so yan, nakalagay na po siya. Okay, so now, pag-usapan naman po natin yung take profit. No? So here, kunyari, meron na kayong uh, live order, gusto nyo i-modify yung order nyo, gusto nyo lagyan ng take profit level, so, lalabas na naman po itong dialogue box na to, Pwede nyo pong ilagay here. And then, ikakopy nyo na lang siya. And then, magta-take profit na siya. And then, lalabas na po siya sa taas. Take profit means... Uh... The, when you have an analysis that you will have an income, kumbaga, i-dictate mo na hanggang dito lang yung gusto kong earning for this kind of trade. Okay? Pwede po tayo mag all-in-one execution. So, kunyari, ito yung pair. Uh, Double-click nyo yan. Lalabas po yung dialog box. Nilipat nyo po yung instant execution nyo. And then, lalagyan nyo na po ng stop plus and then yung take profit. And then, makabay. So, nakapwesto na po lahat. Or, a pending order naman na okay, so kunyari papalitan nyo yan kung kanina instant execution lalagay pending order and then uh, you're just going to choose ano yung type of execution buy limit, buy stop, sell stop sell limit, lalagyan nyo po ng price kung kailan kayo magbabay or sell and then lalagyan nyo na po ng stop loss and then take profit so pwede rin po yung all in one execution for that. okay so, well, actually, tapos na ho tayo. I'm not sure if you'd like to consider yung basic sentence. Mm -hmm. Ito din po yung ginawa natin before. Mm -hmm. So, kunyari, uh, after hearing Mario Draghi's uh, announcement against the USD over... Uh, uh, after hearing Mario Draghi's announcement, my sentiment that Euro against the US dollar is overall bearish. However, I saw a steep downtrend which might continue the whole day. So, I'm expecting support at 1.300 but will continue its bearish descent at 1.3500. So, I'll go short at that level. Um, now that you know how to create pending executions, and then you're expecting support, what could be the best approach na pwede nyo gawin dito? Support. Sell stop. Okay. Saan po kayong level magsa-sell stop? 1.3. Ah. Uh, 1.35. Pwede rin po. So, kanyari. So, overall bearish. Bounce. Then, bababa siya. So, kung gusto nyo mag-sell stop at 1.30, pwede rin po. Pwede rin, ano? Parang inantay nyo na lang muna siyang tumaas. Tapos, bababa naman din siya dyan. Tapos, pag galimbawa, tinamaan nyo na yun, dire-diretso na po. Pwede po yun. Pwede rin po yung gusto nyo mangyari. Na uh, kunyari, bumaba, uh, gumalaw na yung market, tumaas na, pero yung sales stop nyo medyo mababa lang ng 1.35, tapos pag tinamaan, dire-direction na siya. Pwede rin po na bababa, 
magbabay limit ako ng 1.300. Oh, kasi magbabaon siya ron. Pero ang take profit level ko, sir, is hanggang 1.35 lang. Sa so, naka-exit na ako ng market. Execute pulit ako ng okay, sell stop. Pwede po. Pag nag-buy, uh, nag-buy limit ka sa 1.35. Naka-take profit naman ako sa 1.35. Yes. Pwede naman pong ganun. But at least ngayon, sir, you get the idea on how we approach the market. Ayan siya. So, You're prepared for the bearish situation. Pwede ka mag-pending execution sa lang. But may, no, may, no, may anticipation ka ng konti pang bounce. Mm-hmm. Yun ang mga mag-take profit from that. Yes, pwede. For pwede. that day. For yeah. that day. Pwede. pwede. So now, finish na po tayo sa sa module 2 congratulations <laughs> and uh, I guess ang gagawin ko na lang email ko na lang din sa inyo yung module 1 and 2 para at least you get to review it uh, 